the coding solution we are going to solve now is called multiply strings and we can see that this one is a lead code medium problem and also a very well like problem now in this case we are given two integer uh, nums1 and nums2 but they are represented as a string and we need to return the product of num1 and num2 uh, which uh, also needs to be represented as a string now in this case we cannot use built-in library that converts string to integer and then just do the multiplication on its own so we'll have to find a clever way to do it and the logical way is very straightforward basically we are just going to apply the same technique we learn sometime in the grade third or fourth uh, let's say that if i tell you that i have this number 24 and 7 and i need to do multiplication of these two number what is the going to be the simplest logic so in this case 4 multiplied by 20, uh, 27 is going to be 28 so i'm going to use 8 and the carry is going to be 2 then once again 2 multiplied by 7 is going to be 14 14 plus 2 is going to be 16 so i'm going to be storing this value and this is the multiplication result let's try to up the ante and let's try to do 12 multiplied by 13 right in this case we are going to do the multiplication in two steps and uh, first step is going to be multiplying this 3 with this 2 and 1 and then next step would be one, multiplying this 1 with this 1 and 2 and then storing the result now notice every single time we move one digit to the left we are going to add a 0 subsequent 0 as well so let's do that so this is going to be 6 multi and this is going to be uh, 3 okay now we will have to multiply 1 with this 12 but actually we are multiplying 10 so we are going to be adding one zero over here and then this is going to be 2 and this is going to be 1 and we are going to do the sum of these two values so this is going to be this 156 and this is the result so basically this is the whole idea of how we can multiply multiple digits or like two digits that contains multiple digits uh, number one thing is we need to start from the rightmost position now starting from the rightmost position we are going to take a digit uh, like in nums1 or no nums2 let's say that num for nums2 we took one digit that is going to be this three we are going to take this digit and multiply with every single value of this nums1 okay so we can do that next thing is we are going to store this value somewhere that where it needs to make appropriate sense and this appropriate sense comes from two portions first one is number one depending on the index position we can determine that where this value should stay now let's come back to our computer based solution number one thing is if we are given two digits nums1 and nums2 we need to store them somewhere and the logic we are going to apply is that we are going to store them be storing them in an array now the maximum length of this array can only be the total length of the sums of digits n1 and n2 so we can generate an array like that and i don't want to get into mathematical explanation on why that is the case but that is the case trust me on this so let's say you generate an array that is going to be storing the result now after doing that we'll have to do the tedious operation of storing the result for every single value but we don't need to do one by one we'll need to figure out what is going to be the appropriate space where we can directly store the results so let's say that this is going to be three multiplied by two so we know that we'll have to store six somewhere in this array but where the six is going to lie that is going to be some of the index positions of these two values so let's say the index position over here is 0 1 2 and 3 now the index position for this one is going to be 1 and the index position for this one is also going to be 1 so 1 plus 1 is going to be 2 so we need to store this value in i index plus j index plus 1 this value so we store it over here and if there were to be a carry which is not in this case well let's say instead of this being 12 what if this value was 16 so in this case we would have stored 8 over here and then there would have been a carry and that carry would have been stored or one step before that so this is where we would take take their carry in and then once again repeat the same operation for this two values and find the appropriate index position to insert that value like this so the multiplication is going to be stored at i plus j plus one location i just explained why and then carry is going to be stored at i plus jth location because that is going to be one location lesser than the previous location 
now the question is how we are going to convert all of this string into numbers so we cannot use directly parse int method but we can do it at the character level so at a character level we can just subtract the value from zero and then whatever subsequent values we can actually convert that into integer so i'll show you in the code on how it's done so now let's see that what are the things we have number one we have the way to convert nums1 and nums2 into integers so let's say we would have values like this next thing is we are going to have a result array where we are going to be storing all the results of all the calculated values and last thing is we are going to apply the common method of multiplying all the values or like every digit by digit so taking in one digit and multiplying with all the other digits and once again repeating the same operation for all the remaining ones taking care of the carry and storing them in the appropriate position inside the result array and that we are going to be doing by doing i plus j plus 1 and i plus j for the carry okay so i hope this explanation makes sense multiplication it's quite straightforward we are just going to do it the same way we have been doing since second grade and that is to take care of all the values uh, and then take care of the carry and whatever the values we can store it in the answer this solution would work perfectly well uh, and in the end there is going to be one last thing that we need to do because we have the result being stored inside an array we will have to convert this array back to string and which we can do it using string builder or there are many inbuilt methods that can do it and we are allowed to do it and lastly we need to convert it into two string and return that as the answer so this is the whole solution this would run in big of m multiplied by n time complexity where m is the total number of digits present in nums1 and n is the total number of digits present in n2 because we are multiplying all the digits with all the other digits there is no faster way to do it apart from this and uh, it's acceptable because that is what the question demands and uh, in terms of space complexity because we are using an additional array to store all the values this is going to be big of n plus m where once again n is the total number of digits for n1 and m is the total number of digits for n n2 nums2 and this is an acceptable solution now personally if someone asks this question in an interview i think i don't think like it's a very valid question to begin with but it's a popular question and sometimes interviewer like to throw some curve balls at you so hopefully you can tackle them just as easily as i explained but overall now let's move on to the coding solution for this one now the coding solution is not the most straightforward one even though the problem is very simple so let's walk through the coding solution first we are going to check for an edge case that either num1 or num2 is equal to 0 we can simply return 0 if that is not the case we are going to initialize our result array that is going to be th uh, of the combined length of num1 plus num2 and then we are going to iterate over every single i and j combinations so we are going to use two for loops to iterate over all the numbers now notice that we are going in reverse so we are going from rightmost position to the leftmost position now for every single character we are going to multiply uh, both like we are going to multiply digit by digit and even though we cannot use directly parse int mechanism we can still convert uh, any particular string value to appropriate integer value by doing this operation at the character level and then we are going to multiply both of these two digits after that important thing is to find appropriate position inside the result array to store that product and we are also going to need to store the high value that is where we are going to be calculating the carry after that we are we will add the multiplication result to the current position and also handle if there exist any query uh, or sorry any carry and then uh, we are going to set the current position to the remainder value of the result position low and also divided by 10 to find the high position value uh, so we can work with appropriate next values that are going to be coming in then we will need to convert this array result array into a string which is quite straightforward we are just going to use the string builder function and then we can check that if 
the return the product value if that is equal to zero we can simply return zero if that is not the case we'll just convert it to the two string and return whatever the value it is as it is so let's try to run this code okay seems like it's working as expected let's submit this code and our code runs beautifully beats most of the other solutions which is very good also really good in terms of uh, uh, space complexity as well so once again the coding solution is present in our github repository feel free to go and check it out from there thank you